Eh, I don't have perfect hair for this video, but then I don't really care. Do I care or otherwise despair about my hair? Au contraire, mon frère. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. So, at long last, here we are after a two-month hiatus, not planned. These uh, breaks in my uh, Hold On CD Collection videos are never planned. It just happens to be the way things happen. That's a phrase for the Department of Redundancy Department. Anyway, yes, after a two-month hiatus, here I am back with chapter 18, I believe it is, of my whole darn CD collection. Yes, in each of these videos, I show you the next 90 CDs in my CD collection, warts and all, uh, guilty pleasures, not so guilty pleasures. Honestly, I don't really have any guilty pleasures. They're all not so guilty pleasures. Whatever music moves you, moves you. Period. The end. That's as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, uh, yes, 90 CDs coming up with you, but uh, first of all, I like to, um, when this happens, if I have added stuff to my collection uh, in the area before the area this video covers, I will uh, talk about it in this beginning part, uh, which I call the Recent Arrivals section, and uh, since it's been two months, there are quite a few Recent Arrivals, so let's get jump right on to, into it, since we have a lot of ground to cover. Here we have Atlas Genius. This is a... Uh, Synthwave-ish kind of a, a duo, I think they are. Yeah, a duo. You can see there are two of them. Uh, they put this one out in 2012 or something. I used to have this a while ago, got rid of it, and uh, found it uh, for a pretty good deal, just $3, and decided to give it another try. And it's I think it's now a permanent part of my collection. It was supposed to be last time, but you know how that goes. Anyway, uh, Gene Autry. Here we have the essential Gene Autry, uh, one of the very first... Uh, big-time country singers from back in the... Yeah, he started in 1933. The Yellow Rose of Texas, one of the big hits, classic country songs. And uh, doesn't this one have... Oh, Deep in the Heart of Texas, I guess I was thinking of another one. Uh, uh, Next to the X in Texas is a, a song that I heard when I was a kid. I need to do some homework and see who it was that recorded it and uh, maybe get that on uh, recording somewhere. But yes, Deep in the Heart of Texas, that's another great classic, uh, almost a folk song, as how uh, legendary it is. And then uh, this one, a few of these in, in this new arrival section I found in uh, at a St. Vinny's, and I forgot to have them in my St. Vinny's crawl video that I just did last week. Uh, the very best of Sarah Brightman. Now let's get this so we can actually see it. Oh uh, yes, it's uh, embossed with foil, so it's hard to see the lettering and not have glare from the camera light. Anyway, yes, the very best of Sarah Brightman. I like a couple of her, one or two of her studio albums, and I decided to uh, get a best of collection. This was at uh, St. Vinny's also. And, or actually, this was the first one in this group that was at St. Vinny's. This one was also at St. Vinny's. George Burns. What the heck? He, he was a classic uh, comedian and entertainer from, I think he might have started in the vaudeville days, you know, before uh, television, back when radio was kind of the thing. Uh, it's kind of fun. He wasn't a singer by trade, but he's entertaining uh, on an album. Now, these next two I got in an eBay lot, along with uh, one or two others that you'll see coming up here. Uh, Roseanne Cash. I got her album, The List, which had several guest artists on it, and so I decided I really enjoyed that one. So I decided to dip into a couple of other her other albums, and they were in an eBay lot with stuff that uh, other stuff that I was looking for. So, yes, uh, Rules of Travel is this one, and Black Cadillac. Uh, this one was rec she recorded this right around the time that uh, her dad passed away, as well as who else was it? Uh, it's kind of dedicated to oh, I guess uh, her mother, June Carter Cash. Well, actually, she passed away couple years before. Actually, June Carter Cash and Johnny Cash passed away within a few months of each other back in 2003. And uh, Vivian Liberto Cash Distin is the other person of the three to whom this album was dedicated. I'm not sure who she was, but anyway. So yes, two June uh, Roseanne Cash albums. Uh, this one uh, would have been in my May the Fours Be With You video a couple months ago if I had gotten it already. 
but yes, uh, a Patsy Klein collection. This is four discs. Uh, disc one, two, three, and four. And showing this to you, I'm kind of wondering if I might have already shown this one to you. Uh, I try not to show in these recent arrival sections stuff that I've already talked about in terms of, you know, bargain bag keepers or the stuff that I've gotten in hauls, uh, you know, just because it's kind of redundant. So uh, hopefully I'm not repeating anything here that you are, have already seen. Uh, next we have Fantasia, Back to Me. Uh, this is her third album, I believe. Uh, yes, uh, after I found her holiday album several months ago, it might have even been before Christmas last year, I can't remember, uh, I've kind of uh, wanted to pick up a little bit more of Fantasia. Knockout voice on her. She was just one of the best vocalists in, I think, in all of American Idol history, in my opinion. And then we have another best of here, Debbie Gibson. I think I got this one also at a uh, St. Vinny's. Uh, her greatest hits. I'd gotten a couple of her studio albums, you know, for her first couple of studio albums. Didn't find enough on either of the albums for me to keep those albums. But hey, greatest hits is, is the next best thing. And that one, I think that was the St. Vinny's, and so was this, and incredibly enough. Whitney Houston's greatest hits. Yes, I have her first four studio albums, uh, but this, uh, you know, she had a couple of non album things. Um, and of course, this album is the entire second disc is remixes, which are not available available on her studio albums, as well as some, as I said, non album songs. So uh, this, as much as I like Whitney Houston, that's ba that's pretty much a necessity, even if even if you have her first four albums. So, and then we have Joe Jonas, uh, his album Fast Life, his first and thus far only solo album. Uh, I ended up uh, I I think I had this one a long time ago. It was I kind of got rid of it when I uh, my interest in the Jonas Brothers died out. Uh, I had a couple of Nick uh, Nick Jonas's solo albums too; those are gone. But this one, uh, ever since uh, he came out with that DNCE group, I've uh, been curious to check this one out once more. And uh, turns out I like it a little bit more than I did the last time. So then this one I found at Epic Seconds a couple of months ago, and I was really happy to find this. Uh, Annie, Len Annie Lennox's Nostalgia. This is the deluxe edition, which has a DVD with it. So yes, she covers a bunch of... This is a covers album of hers. Uh, her second covers album, uh, Medusa, I believe, was actually also a covers album. So yes, she does some great uh, classic uh, Amer Great American Songbook standards. And of course, since it's Annie Lennox, it's awesome. And this one is another deluxe edition, uh, but it's replacing an album that I've had for many, many, many years. Uh, Huey Lewis in the News, Sports. Yes, uh, for all this time, I just had the regular edition. I had seen this one when it first came out. I just never got around to picking it up. But it was at Epic Seconds. I think it might have been at the same time I bought Annie Lennox. Yes, there, there have been a couple of good days recently at Epic Seconds where, you know, I go there five, six times in a row, see really nothing that grabs me, and then all of a sudden, a bunch of stuff. And then uh, these next two were actually in a, an, uh, an eBay acquisition. I think it was it was not in the same lot as Roseanne Cash, but I believe it was from the same seller. I bought two different lots from the same seller. Uh, the Love and Spoonful, their first album, Do You Believe in Magic, and their second album, Daydream. I used to have both of these combined onto one CD. Uh, it was a Japanese uh, print, but these, song, these albums have a bunch of bonus tracks on them, so that's kind of one of the reasons. And since it just happened to be in that eBay lot, and I had actually had my eyes on these. These were actually at Epic Seconds for a while, or at least one of them was, and uh, never got around to getting them, and they were eventually gone. So This might be the most unusual CD here. I saw it at uh, House of Records and just thought it looked interesting, so I decided to get it. Um, this is a tribute album to Bix Biderbeck. I think that's how you pronounce it. I thought it was Biderbeck, but I think it's Biderbeck. Uh, but yes, Jeff Moldauer and his futuristic ensemble do songs that uh, Bix Beiderbeck made famous. And this actually has quite a number of vocal. Um, it's actually probably two-thirds vocal and one-third instrumental. So, And uh, Martha Wainwright, Rufus Wainwright's sister, is on here. And as well as uh, their dad, Loudon Wainwright III. And who else? I guess... Um, yeah, she appears on, uh, Martha Wainwright appears on a two or three songs. Loudon Wainwright III appears on one or two songs. 
And uh, all the other songs that have vocals, uh, the vocals are actually by Jeff Moldauer himself. So it's an interesting album, making me think about uh, dipping into actual Bix Beiderbecke recordings. Then we have, uh, this was another one at uh, St. Vinny's. I missed, it turns out I missed several uh, CDs to talk about in my St. Vinny's Hall. Uh, Jim Neighbors, the best of Jim Neighbors, of course. Uh, golly, Sergeant Carter. He was on uh, Gomer Pyle and uh, Andy Griffith's show, but he had an amazing voice. You never would have known it by the uh, uh, country bumpkin hit character he played with that voice, um, uh, Gomer Pyle. But yes, fantastic voice and a member of the LGBTQ community. Uh, we found out, oh, in the 2000s, 2010s, uh, he married his longtime partner, so. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. I just thought I'd mention it. Then we have Roy Orbison. This is his uh, his final album, released, I think, just after he passed away. Um, uh, Mystery Girl. This, of course, has You Got It, uh, perhaps my favorite Roy Orbison song on here. And it was produced by... Yeah, it was uh, produced, or at least most of the tracks were produced by Jeff Lynne from ELO. This was right around the time of uh, the Traveling Wilburys. They, all those guys kind of uh, uh, intermingled together. They kind of had their own little circle. I think uh, Jeff Lynne produced Tom Petty's album Full Moon Fever, if I'm correct, if I remember correctly. So, and anyway, without going too far off on a tangent, uh, the last acquisition in my recent arrivals is a three-disc set of Buck Owens. Yes, the Buck Owens collection, 1959 to 1990. So yes, got disc one here. Disc 2 and Disc 3. And I'm not going to spoil it here, but I'm thinking about doing a video of uh, a list of artists that I kind of got into uh, thanks to their appearances in movies or TV shows. And uh, Buck Owens is one of those. I'm not going to tell you the specifics of it because I want to make the video worth watching. Not that it wouldn't be if I spoiled that one part, but anyway. But also because, as I said, we've got a lot of ground to cover. So yes, those are my... Recent arrivals. Now let's go ahead and uh, let me take a drink first. I believe this is the first half. Yes, this is the first half of the next chapter of my CD collection. Oh, let's put this somewhere where it will sit properly. Now we left off with. Uh, Rusted Root. That was the band that we uh, finished, and the rare occasion when the end of the CDs that I have by that artist actually ended at that chapter of the video, instead of the, the artist, you know, straddling two chapters. So let's move on to the next one. I'm actually not totally 100% sure how to pronounce this guy's name. Al Alexander, it's either Rybeck or Rebeck or Rebach, I'm not sure, but he's a Norwegian, and he was a, a finalist or semi-finalist on the Norwegian version of Idol, but he is probably better known, at least in Europe. I mean, most of us Americans have never heard of this guy, I will admit. Um, he had at least one winner or finalist in uh, the uh, Eurovision Song Contest. So that that's kind of his claim to fame now. But yes, this is his uh, first album, uh, Fairy Tales. I've got uh, two albums. I, I bought this guy... Um, when I was in the middle of a uh, kind of a, a little obsession or a fascination with the various World Idol alumni. So that's re the reason he's in my collection. Uh, his uh, second, softness, bleh, second album is called No Boundaries. Uh, very good stuff. Kind of, a, it, it's pop. Pop with a little bit of folk. And uh, he actually plays the violin, as you can kind of see on the backs of... Uh, oh, he's actually doesn't have the violin on this one. But yes, uh, violin is part of his uh, instrumentation. He contributes his own violin playing to a lot of his tracks. So, so yeah, pop with a little bit of a folk um, thing. Then uh, next we have actually a CD single by S Club, formerly known as S Club 7. Uh, this is the song Don't Stop Moving." Love this song, and this is really the only song that I really enjoy by S Club. Uh, they, they were actually, you know, as much... As I like pop music, you know, the, the late 90s, early 2000s pop music. I love boy bands. Never could really get into S Club 7. But uh, yes, this is one of my favorite tracks. 
in all of pop music, actually. So, uh, yeah, very, very fun and entertaining. And it's a song that has to do with music, and specifically dancing to music. So, obviously, it's going to be up my alley. And then we have the best of Sade. Uh, I really like Sade, just not enough to warrant uh, getting her individual albums. At least not yet. I'm still kind of thinking about doing that. Uh, but yes, uh, she's lovely, lovely voice. A little, little bit of a, almost a bossa nova uh, sound in some of her uh, stuff. Very fun. Then we have a rock band, which I realized, I think this morning I was just poking around online, uh, realized these guys are from Oklahoma. I've, you know, since my friend Noah is from Oklahoma, I've kind of been paying attention to what other artists or bands out there hail from Oklahoma. And this is one of them. They're called Safety Suit. And great, um, I guess you'd call them alternative rock music. I've never understood what alternative is supposed to mean. You know, they, it's just kind of a, a name that the marketing doofuses threw, threw out there about 20 years ago. Anyway, great rock music. Um, Someone Like You is a really, really good song on here. Uh, Down is another great one. Uh, Annie. Listen to the song Annie by Safety Suit. A great message in that song. Uh, but yeah, one thing I like about these guys is um, they tend to put a little bit of an emphasis on the vocal harmonies when they, you know, their nice rousing anthemic choruses, they break into harmony, which is you don't hear in a lot of rock bands these days. And uh, now we have their sophomore album called These Times. Uh, one of my favorite songs, my probably my favorite song by Safety Suit, is called Staring at It. And that one's on this album. So, yes, listen to any and then listen to Staring at It by Safety Suit. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Anyway, uh, here we have kind of a folk pop duo. And these guys only put out one album, and I am so sad that they did. Sam and Ruby. And I cannot remember how I found out about these guys. But yes, uh... I can't remember what Sam's last name is, but uh, Ruby Amanfu is her, uh, the woman in this group. She's done a couple other things. I think she might have done a solo album, or at least some solo singles, or was featured as a vocalist on other artists' stuff. But uh, yes, this is just such great, breezy stuff. Kind of just like the uh, album cover kind of suggests, nice, breezy, summery, feel-good stuff. Uh, this I Know is a great song. Uh won't let you go is another really good one. So, yeah. if you like that breezy kind of folk stuff, it's very good. And then we're kind of moving into something completely different. Uh, Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs. Uh, this is this was one of those kind of novelty groups. Um, Little Red Riding Hood is one of the songs they did, and uh, Wooly Bully. That was probably their biggest hit. Was Wooly Bully. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, <laughs> you you can kind of tell by the song titles that they had some. Uh, they did some. Kind of pop fluff nonsense. Ring Dang Do is one of the songs here. Um, Juju Hand is another one. But, uh, oh, <laughs> oh, that's right. This isn't these guys. This was somebody else. Um, I heard about, I heard one of their songs on the Dr. Demento show. And it's a great, it's kind of a kiss off song, you know, a, a breakup song in a way. It's called I Couldn't Spell. <clears throat> And that's how it's spelled. <laughs> it's a great song. you got to listen to it. So, yes. Uh, just uh, Sam the Sham, I Couldn't Spell. And, and that'll, that'll get you to it on, on uh, Google search or whatever. Then we have, uh, this is a group I guarantee almost none of you have heard of. They're called Same Same. This was an offshoot of the Moffats, who uh, you saw. The Moffats did what I think still think is my favorite album of all time, Submodalities. Uh, these, this came out after that album. They, they broke up after some modalities. I still breaks my heart that they did. This uh, album and, the, the, and this group, you know, this is the twins, um, Clint and Dave. No, Scott. Clint and Bob Moffat are the twins uh, in the group. And yes, uh, this was basically only popular in Southeast Asia, Singapore, Thailand, that area. Uh, they, they just never grew beyond that. This is much more pop than uh, the Moffats were at the end of their uh, thing. Uh, Submo was produced by Bob Rock, so it had very much of a rock sound, and that's kind of the direction that the Moffats were heading. And then they, you know, these two guys, when they 
decided to go out on their own, did kind of a 180 and went to pop. Uh, not bad. It's definitely ear candy. And uh, I, I'm keeping it just, you know, because of that. Uh, it's because I love the Moffat so much. And then we have a guy that I'm pretty sure you guys have heard of. Santana. I've got the Essential Santana, the two-disc uh, Greatest Hits. Then I've got the two-disc Legacy Edition of Supernatural. Fantastic album. Certainly you've heard it. If you haven't, what's wrong with you? Uh, and then we have... I used to have uh, Shaman. Or is it Shaman? I'm not sure how you pronounce that. The follow-up to Supernatural. Uh, it just wasn't enough on there to really make me want to keep it. But I do have Ultimate Santana, which has an alternate take on one of the singles from Shaman. Uh, where can I find it? Um, oh, Why Don't You and I? Um, the Shaman version of it featured... Um, was it the guy from Nickelback? Was it Chris Cornell? No. I can't remember. Anyway, don't want to make this video too long. Uh, the version on this album is features Alex Band of The Calling. And I actually really enjoy it. I enjoy this one more than the uh, Why Don't You and I featuring... I can't remember who it was. Uh, anyway. You know what I mean. Look it up. Or, or I will and put the stuff down on the screen. Uh, next Santana album is Guitar Heaven, Greatest Guitar Classics of All Time. Uh, another all-star lineup here. Uh, Chris Cornell, Scott Weiland, Rob Thomas, uh, India Ari, and Yo-Yo Ma, which was an interesting uh, pairing. Chris Daughtry, Pat Monahan, Naz, Chester Bennington, and Ray Manzarek of The Doors. Uh, Joe Cocker, Johnny Lang. So, uh, this did not get nearly as much attention as Supernatural and Shaman did, so uh, it, it's worth checking out if you haven't checked out. Then we have another synth-pop duo from the 2000s, late 90s, A Savage Garden. We have a, their self-titled album. Uh, lots, of, lots of good stuff on here. Uh, Truly, Madly, Truly Madly Deeply, uh, To the Moon and Back, Break Me, Shake Me. That was a good one. And then their follow-up, Affirmation. Uh, the title track is really, really good. It's one of my favorites of theirs. And what else is on here? It's been quite a while since I've listened to this one, so I cannot remember very many of the songs by their titles. Shame on me. Then uh, this one was in my sister's collection, uh, Speak Low by Boz Skaggs. This is a, um, he does a lot of uh, uh, classic pop songs, Great American Songbook standards on here. Uh, Do Nothing Till You Hear From Me, um, Skylark, This Time The Dream's On Me. So a very good album. And uh, this one also was in my sister's collection. Timothy B. Schmidt, uh, formerly of the Eagles, uh, a solo of, album of his called Expando. Um, and this one is actually another one that I have not listened to in quite a while uh, since I acquired it from my sister's collection. I need to revisit a lot of those albums. And then we have, excuse me, an album by Diane Shore and B.B. King. Uh, Diane Shore is a... Uh, pop singer, and of course we know we know we all know who BB King is, a blues guitarist, fantastic blues guitarist. Uh, and this is mostly uh, Great American Songbook stuff. Uh, try a little tenderness. Uh, I'm putting all my eggs in one basket. No one ever tells you. Uh, you don't know me. Uh, and at last, the Etta James song. So, yes, very good stuff, and uh, perhaps one of the. Uh, Albums that is maybe overlooked by a lot of B.B. King fans. Then we have a pop band that I kind of like. I'm not a huge fan of theirs. Uh, the Scissor Sisters. Uh, this is their debut self-titled album. Uh, let's see. Take Your Mama is a good one. Uh, Music is the Victim. That one's pretty good. And uh, yes, this is... Uh, a lot of these CDs, I will admit, I, it's been a long time since I've listened to them, and that's the problem with having such a big CD collection, and it's probably also a little bit of a uh, where my guilt comes from in having such a huge selection uh, collection, and I never listen to 80% of what I have. Anyway, uh, their sophomore album by Scissor Sisters, Tada. One of my favorite songs of all time is the opening track, I Don't Feel Like Dancing. Check that one out. Uh, it's a great, great song. And what else is on here? 
There's a song on here called Paul McCartney. That's pretty good. And then we have a Greatest Hits album I just showed you recently, Tales from the Script. Yes, I showed you this in my In Memoriam video. The uh, guitarist, one of the guitarists from the script, passed away earlier this year, before the age of 50. It's a shame. But yes, I, I do enjoy the script. I love pretty much all the songs on here, but those are really the only songs I really enjoy by the script. And so that's kind of why I, I used to have their individual albums and just kind of, when this came out, just got this and uh, got rid of the other ones to save a little shelf space. Okay. Then we have another one from my sister's collection, Earl Scruggs and Friends. Uh, yes, I mean, you look at the uh, star, uh, guest artist lineup on here. Uh, yeah, you've got, uh, he said he does Country Comfort with Elton John and uh, Ring of Fire with Billy Bob Thornton. Uh, Travis Tritt, Melissa Etheridge, Sting, and yeah, so the list goes on. John Fogarty, he does Blue Ridge Mountain Blues with John Fogarty. So, hmm. oh, and uh, Passing Through, he does with Don Henley and Johnny Cash. So, yeah, if that sounds good to you, you might want to check that album out. And then we have Seal. I've got a few albums of his. I have Seal, and then I have Seal. He was really imaginative with uh, naming his albums, wasn't he? Anyway, so yes. <laughs> his first album and his second album, by the way. Um, yes, Crazy is on this one. Uh, Future Love Paradise. And of course, this one his, was, I think, his breakthrough album, basically. Uh, Prayer for the Dying and Kiss from a Rose. So, yeah. And I also have his uh, album of covers. His album's, uh, The album's called Soul. Um, a Change is Gonna Come, the uh, Marvin Gaye song, I Can't Stand the Rain, uh, It's a Man's 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 World, the uh, James Brown song, Here I Am, Come and Take Me, uh, If You Don't Love Me By Now, or If You Don't Know Me By Now, and uh, Knock on Wood. So, yeah. A very good album. Then we're getting into a... Uh, actually, let me take a drink here. My throat's getting a little bit... A, a wee bit parched. Uh, then we have a uh, world idol. This is the winner of the first contest of Australian Idol, Guy Sebastian. I uh, I had his what just his first album for the longest time, and then I decided to uh, build on that. Uh, some very good stuff. And he kind of takes uh, as he progressed through his uh, his discography, he kind of took on a bit of a soul uh, thing, soul mixed with R and B. And that turns out to be, it really is his wheelhouse, basically. Uh, this is his sophomore album, uh, Beautiful Life. And his third, oh, third album, Closer to the Sun. And then he, of course, uh, like most artists, he came around to do a covers album, the Memphis album. Uh, I've got a lot of Memphis soul stuff on here. Soul Man, Hold On, I'm Coming, In the Midnight Hour, I Can't Stand the Rain. It's kind of like Seal's album here. Knock on wood, respect yourself, sitting on the dock of the bay, let's stay together. It's a great album. And then he tried to break through into the States with uh, his next album, Like It Like That. Unfortunately, it didn't uh, didn't work, but the title track is one of my favorite songs. Just so incredibly catchy, one of the catchiest songs uh, in recent memory. So yes, check out Like It Like That by uh, Guy Sebastian. Uh, he features Jordan Sparks, uh, an American Idol uh, winner. Yeah, I think so, on one track on here. So, yes, very good stuff. So, yes, I now have five of his albums, and I'm thinking about, uh, you know, keep on going expanding beyond that. Then we have a uh, country duo called the, S the Secret Sisters. I was about to say the... I was about to say the Scissor Sisters. No, we already did them. The Secret Sisters. Uh, this album was... Uh, oh, executive producer was T-Bone Burnett on their debut album here. And this has... Um, Mostly, I think, uh, covers of classic country songs. Uh, Why Baby Why, which was a... Was it a Buck Owens or a... Uh, I can't remember. Anyway. Uh, so yes, a bunch of great stuff on here. Uh, Something Stupid. Uh, I Got a Feeling. So yeah, they do a couple of uh, Great American Songbook standards as well. And then their sophomore album, they kind of broke out into their own original material. Uh, Put Your Needle Down is the name of this album. And 
the song I Cannot Find a Way. It's a fantastic song. I love, love, love that song. And uh, it's uh, Rattle My Bones. And Ayuka is another good song in here. So, yeah. Then we have an album by a one-shot band. And uh, again, I'm just so... It's terrible that this band just... They did one album and then they just kind of disappeared. The Secret Someones. This was great. Um, kind of electro-rock cross between electro rock and electro pop kind of uh, in there uh i won't follow is a great song dead weight is probably my favorite song on here uh head first is really really good also so check out head first and dead weight that kind of gives you a uh, kind of the two two different sides of them um head first is a bit more poppy but dead weight is much more dead weight is kind of more of a, a joan jet ish kind of a rocker so uh, yeah Check out Secret Someone's. This is their self-titled and only album. Then we have another two-disc essential series with Pete Seeger, classic folk artist. Um, my sister had a smaller, uh, you know, a, a shorter one-disc uh, hits collection in her discography, and that just, uh, I really liked what I heard, and so I decided to expand. Uh, the song Little Boxes by Pete Seeger. If you have not heard that one, a great message in the lyrics of that song. So listen to Little Boxes. Then we have... Um, this is another one that very, very few people know about. Uh, they're a group called The Semantics. Uh, a few chapters ago, you saw me show an album by an artist called Owsley. This, is his, this was his group before uh, he went out solo. And this album, I think, was only available in Japan. But this has a few... Uh, if you really, really love the uh, Owsley's uh, self-titled album, this has a few songs... Um, from that album in earlier versions. Uh, let's see, they got um, Coming Up Roses is on here, and The Sky is Falling. Uh, I guess those are the two, uh, at least judging by the titles. I uh, don't know if there is, might have been one or two others whose titles he changed before he did them on his uh, solo album, but yeah. Uh, the Semantics is the name of this band, and it's called Power Bill. Yes, a very, very good album. Uh, yes. Will Owsley was just... He didn't get enough attention, and he was gone too soon, unfortunately. Then we have one of the very few, if not the only, artist in here that I kind of know personally. Not not really closely. We're not close friends, but I consider us friends. Jack Settle. And hey, Noah had this one personally autographed to me. This is his, his EP, uh, Middle of Somewhere. Great stuff on here. Uh, the song, uh, The Rose is a great, great ballad. Love that song. And that's the only thing that would have made his full-length debut, Hickory Avenue, better is if The Rose had been included on it. But uh, yes, still, this is a fantastic album. Uh, I, I talked about this one in my year-end video last year. It was in my top 10 list. I think, you know, it was in my top 10, wasn't it? I think it was. But yes, wonderful album. And, uh, and yeah, that's, you know, something that I didn't think I would like because it is... It is very much good old-fashioned country music. And I'm not really huge on good old-fashioned country music. Country music. Uh, now we're kind of getting into something different, uh, something kind of throwback. Well, I guess Jack Settle was throwback, too. But this is throwback to uh, the swing era, uh, the 40s, the Brian Setzer Orchestra, uh, the, the, the former Stray Cats frontman. Uh, this is his uh, debut album. And yes, several of these came from my sister's collection. And uh, he's only put out, what, five albums, not counting his holiday albums. No, he's put out more than that since then. Uh, but yes, I've got his first five. My sister had two or three in her collection, so I just built up from there. Uh, yes, their debut self-titled album. And then uh, Guitar Slinger, their sophomore album. And uh, this one was produced by Phil Ramone. Was their first one? No, first one was produced by Brian Titzer. But yes, this one... He always throws in a couple of uh, classic uh, cover songs in each of his albums. I'm trying to find out which one. This one's a little hard to read, so I won't waste the time on the video. And then their third album, The, Dirt, the Dirty Boogie. And this one has... Oh, what was... I thought there was one that I really, really enjoyed. Oh, he actually does a reworking of Rock This Town, the Stray Cat song in this one. And then their fourth album... Vavoom. 
And uh, oh yeah, this one, this one has a song called Jukebox. That's the song I was uh, thinking of. And a cover of the classic swing song, Pennsylvania 65,000 is the opening song on here. He does a version of Mac the Knife. So, yeah. And then, but my favorite Brian Setzer Orchestra album is one of the most unusual albums in my whole collection. Uh, it is called Wolfgang's Big Night Out. In this album, he does, he and his band do uh, swing and big band reworkings, rearrangements of classical music pieces. And it works. Somehow it actually works. And they had as much fun with the song titles as they did with the arrangements. Uh, they, they gave these songs uh, different titles, like uh, Take the Fifth is a re reworking of uh, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, and uh, uh, Wolfgang's Big Night Out is an adaptation of Eine kleine Nachtmusik, A Little Night Music, Wolfgang's Big Night Out. Yeah, you know, so, so you kind of get the gist here. Um, oh, what's there's the oh, Here Comes the Broad which is uh, an adaptation of uh, oh, Wagner's Lohengrin and uh, Mendelssohn's A Midsummer Night's Dream. I think this, this is commonly played at weddings, at least the, the traditional version of uh, one or two of those, one or both of those songs are played at weddings. That's why they call it Here Comes the Broad. Uh, so yeah. Oh, and 1812 Overdrive. Obvi obviously you know what uh, that one is an adaptation of. So yes, I could go on well, I guess I did go on forever about that one. Sorry, this video is going to be long. I'm sorry, I'm going to try and speed it up here. But as you can see, I love that album. Uh, then we have Shakira with her classic, uh, her uh, most famous album, Laundry Service. And this is actually a two-disc edition with a DVD. So the DVD's got, uh, what, a, a couple of music videos and or a couple of live performances on there. So, and the regular, the CD has a couple of bonus tracks. So, yeah. Great song. It's the only album I have of hers, but the song Whenever, Wherever is so catchy. And wasn't there another single on here that was really good? Uh, oh, Underneath Your Clothes. That was a good one. And then we have Time to Beam Up, William Shatner. Uh, yes, this CD, uh, I'm not sure why, but it was in my sister's collection. And I didn't think that she would uh, like something like this, but she... She did, and uh, so, yes, I was happy to inherit it, obviously. I did not have it before I got her CD collection. So, uh, yes, William Shatner is kind of uh, unique in his renditions of some things, but this album is one of my favorites. And I guess I ought to do a, a video on weird and unusual albums, because I've got several of these, uh, Wolfgang's Big Night Out, you just saw, as well as Has Been by William Shatner. This is a great album. I'm just going to say it right here. Uh, produced by Ben Folds. Uh, this was kind of his comeback album, I guess you'd say. I think it was the first album he did after The Transformed Man, which which he did back in the 60s. So, And this one was 2004. Uh, yes, the lyrics in this album are really personal and heartfelt in a lot of the songs. Some of them are just goofs and stuff that he does just kind of as parody or, uh, uh, or not parody, but a satire and just kind of being silly. But other songs are have a very deep meaning and significance to William Shatner. He wrote, I think, most or all of the lyrics. And uh, this has appearances by Henry Rollins and, of course, Ben Folds himself, as well as, um, not Kenny Chesney, uh, Brad Paisley appears on one song here. So, yes, that uh, kind of cemented my uh, appreciation of William Shatner as a musician or as a recording artist so it sounds crazy but trust me that album is really good i actually have it on vinyl they put it out on a vinyl uh issue a couple of years ago and uh i had a credit slip burning money and burning a hole in my wallet so i picked it up and i almost uh forced myself to play 45 cd pickup i almost spilled the cds out of that rack so let's go on to <clears throat> the other half of this block of my CD collection after I get a drink of water here. Sorry, this video is going to be a little long. I will try to move a little more quickly. If you guys have any questions about any of these uh, CDs that you see here, drop me a, a link in the comments and I can talk more about them. 
Uh, so I can talk about my Hold On CD Collection spotlights. I can make videos out of that if you want to. So yeah, drop me a line if you see something you'd like to know more about. Please. Uh, continuing with William Shatner. Uh, yes, Has Been was so good, it had to go down downhill from there. Not that this is a bad album, but it's, it's interesting. Um, Seeking Major Tom is the name of this album. Of course, since it has my name in the title, it's obviously going to be meaningful to me. But this is covers of space-themed songs like uh, Major Tom Coming Home from uh, Peter Schilling, uh, Space Oddity by uh, uh, David Bowie, Brain Fart, Major Brain Fart, uh, and then Space Cowboy by uh, My Brain Is Just Not Working Today. Anyway. <laughs> and She Blinded Me With Science by Thomas Dolby. Uh, Rocket Man by Elton John. Dang it, who did Space Cowboy? Anyway. Um, Bohemian Rhapsody, a cover of Bohemian Rhapsody is on here. And uh, yes, he features Richie Blackmore, Lyle Lovett, Brad Paisley, Steve Miller. Steve Miller Band! Thank you! Or, thank you. Um, and yes, Bootsy Collins, Patrick Moraz, uh, Toots Hibbert, Peter, Peter Frampton. I mean, an all-star an all cast of features on this album, so... It's pretty good, I have to say, since I love uh, songs about space and astronomy and all that stuff. This one, though, was kind of a disappointment, uh, much bigger of a disappointment. Ponder the Mystery. <clears throat> yes, Ponder the Mystery. Anyway, uh, yes, I don't think there were any features on here, and this was mostly original material, so... <clears throat> Excuse me. But he did come back uh, last year, the year before, uh, 2021 with his album Bill. This was this is the closest he's come to matching the uh, excellency of Has Been. And uh, actually, and another pretty prominent name uh, was basically corralling the whole project and kind of serving as the executive producer, uh, Joe Jonas. Kind of another reason why I uh, uh, got Joe Jonas's album again was uh, it's kind of, you know, I kind of respect anybody who kind of gives Bill Shatner a hand and, and helps him to produce a really good album. And uh, yeah, kind of uh, this along the same lines as has been, a lot of personal lyrics in here. And uh, one or, there's one or two songs that are kind of uh, silly, but this album overall is a little more serious than has been. But uh, we got Brad Paisley again on here, uh, Joe Walsh, Robert Randolph. That was another selling point for this album. Is uh, Yeah, Robert Randolph, you saw him in my last chapter, uh, kind of a soul uh, and uh, gospel artist that I've really come to enjoy. Uh, Dave Cause, the jazz saxophonist, is on here as well. And uh, Joan as Policewoman features on one track. So, yeah, interesting. And I also really enjoy the cover art on here. Uh, you see, you can see some horses. Uh, he is an avid horseman, and there's a song, at least one song, about his love of horses on here. So, and yeah, uh, each of the pictures in each of the bands here kind of has a bit of a meaning to... Uh, and a connection to one of the songs on the track list. So kind of a inter interesting the way they tied the album art into the album content. So, And then... <clears throat> sorry, my throat's a little bit sore. Then we have a uh, electro-pop, electro-rock band called Shiny Toy Guns. The, uh, really heavy on the synths, but kind of a rock. They're kind of like if the Killers were a little bit more disco-ish, or a little bit more dance-pop-ish. Yeah, not, not really disco. But yes, a great album by these guys, and I gave these guys a try because uh, Chad Petrie, or Gregory Chad Petrie, the front man for this group, was in a group that I liked when I was much younger, a very much of a bubblegum pop group. So he, he kind of went, you know, from one extreme to the other. I, I guess you could go further. You could go into, like, uh, uh, death metal instead of, you know, electro pop. But anyway... Some good stuff on here. Uh, Le Disco, actually, you know, I I refrain from calling this uh, stuff dis comparing it to disco music, but there's actually a song on here called Le Disco. And then um, Don't Cry Out is a good song. Rainy Monday is probably my favorite song on here. And uh, the opener, You Are the One. So if you have not tried out Shiny Toy Guns, check out uh, their debut album, We Are Pilots, and their sophomore album, uh... Their sophomore album, Season of Poison, was also pretty good. And this one, as I recall, has a second disc on here. 
oh yeah, just a, I guess this is a, a non-album single called a Free Fall Melody. So, but yes, let's see what's on here. Um, Uh, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't remember. I can't remember. the. There was one or two songs on his that I really, really enjoyed. And so, yeah, sorry for the dead air there in the video. And then their third album called Three. Uh, three as in the Roman numeral three. Um, Carrie is a really good song on here. So, uh, but yeah. And they, they pretty much continue that uh, electro rock, dance-ish rock uh, vein through all three of their albums. I think they might actually have more albums out since then. Then shifting over to something that's uh, quite a bit different from Shiny Toy Guns, we have Ryan Shoup and the Rubber Band. These guys are kind of a bluegrass pop sort of a group. Uh, I think I got this album um, when I was a member of a uh, music service, a, ma a mail-order music service, online mail-order music service, uh, called yourmusic.com. It was kind of a, uh, a queue-based thing. You put CDs in a queue, you pay $6.99 a month, and they send you the next CD in their queue, in your queue. But you had to be careful because if you, even if you didn't have any CDs in your queue, they would still charge you $6.99 a month. But anyway, this was in their catalog, never heard of them before, decided to give it a try. And this was before uh, you could conveniently try out sound clips online. So, uh, But yes, it was a winner. Uh, the song Banjo Boy, which is the, the opening track, kind of a uh, self-deprecating song about, you know, he's, he's, he's all, you know, big and popular and famous because he plays the banjo kind of a sort of thing. And uh, uh, even Superman was really good. Dream Big is a good song, and that's the title track, incidentally. So yes, some of these songs are silly, and some of them are uplifting and kind of inspirational and uh, fun. So, yeah. Very entertaining album was one of the most pleasant surprises, uh, it turned out, that I ever just kind of uh, was a blind buy. And we're already at 45 minutes. I've got to step it up here. Sorry. Uh, then we have um, Sigrid with her album Sucker Punch, her debut album, Fantastic Stuff, and her sophomore album How to Let Go. Great. Um, she is Swedish, I believe. Or no, Norwegian, I think. But yes, great uh, contemporary pop stuff. I love it. Then we have an artist named Sigala. This is one of those uh, EDM artists that has a bunch of uh, guest, guest artists on here. Um, John Newman, one of my favorite, uh, well, one of my favorite vocalists. Uh, the Vamps, which you will see in a couple of chapters from now, uh, a pop band from the UK. And Paloma Faith, Craig David, uh, Codeline, Kylie Minogue. So he brought in some really good names on here. Now this next artist, uh, some of you may have heard of. She's actually had kind of two phases in her career, and I'll talk about them here. Lucy Silvas. I just happened upon her. Oh, yeah. Um, she duetted with another artist, uh, uh, Jeremy... No, Gregory Le Marchal, uh, that you saw several chapters ago, a, a French pop artist. She guested on one of his songs, and so that's how I found out about her. So I picked up her debut album. It was very, very good. I really enjoyed it, and... Uh, that was all I had of her for a long time, uh, but very just very recently, in, in the same lot that I got the uh, Roseanne Cash CDs, I think, uh, this was in there. And it was, this is her sophomore album, The Same Side. These first two albums, she was very much a uh, pop artist, you know, uh, adult contemporary pop, not like the teen pop kind of stuff, but adult contemporary pop. And then years went by. And I discovered her. Uh, she put out a couple of albums. These other two first two albums were pretty much only released in the UK and Europe. You can't find those here in the States, I don't think. But uh, years later, as I said, saw a CD by hers uh, in one a store here in the States. Uh, it was called Letters to Ghosts and decided to pick it up. And uh, so, yeah, she kind of restarted in a bit more of a uh, singer-songwriter, slightly Americana kind of a thing. So she kind of switched switched gears and, you know, kind of appropriate since several years went by. Let me see. This one was... Of course, there's no copyright date on here. I was looking for the copyright date on this one. But I want to say like 10 years passed by before she put out Letters to Ghosts, an excellent album, by the way. And then she followed that up a couple of years ago with EGO. So yes, uh, she is a great artist. Uh, 
kind of, she kind of has, as I said, two different phases in her career, both worth, worth listening to. Then we have a classic pop artist that I think I got into her because of my sister, uh, Carly Simon. This is a two-disc anthology of hers uh, found a couple of years ago at Epic Seconds. Yes, pretty much every song you'd ever yeah, want to know. And a slippery uh, slipcase. <laughs> slippery slipcase. <laughs> and then she... Um, I don't have a lot of her albums. Actually, just a few. Uh, she did some uh, a uh, album of uh, Great American Songbook Standards, Moonlight Serenade. Very good. And then uh, this CD, though, was in my sister's collection. She does... Uh, actually, she does pretty much... Uh, Throwback, actually, back to like traditional folk songs. A lot of these things are on her album "Into White." Uh, oh, Susanna, that uh, old uh, classic song, and uh, "Over the Rainbow," and uh, let's see, "You Are My Sunshine." <clears throat> you are my sunshine. Excuse me, a little bit of a, a little bit of a, hicc a bit of a hiccup there. Sorry, but yes, suffice to say, a very entertaining album. Then we have Simon and Garfunkel. I actually have managed to accumulate their entire discography. Uh, Wednesday morning, 3 a.m., their debut album. And these are all the uh, albums with a few bonus tracks on it, remastered with bonus tracks. Then we have their sophomore album, Sounds of Silence. And then uh, Parsley, Sage, Rosemary, and Time, their third album. Their absolute classic album, Bookends. And finally, Bridge Over Troubled Water, another classic album. Then we have uh, these. These next two were actually in my sister's collection. Uh, this is a reissue, or maybe it was the first issue, of a 1969 live uh, performance that they did. This was put out in 2008, the CD. So, uh, and then I actually don't have, I thought I did have uh, their concert in Central Park. I don't have that one. But uh, this one was in my sister's collection, still crazy after all these years, Paul Simon's solo album. And, of course, I also have Graceland. So, yes, that's what I need to do. Uh, is, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, then we have a uh, kind of a lo-fi singer-songwriter. I guess is the best way to describe this guy. Kind of like Beck, but uh, a little bit different. Uh, he calls himself Simple Kid. And this is his, his first album, One. And uh, he named his second album, Two. Uh, the song Lil' King Kong was used in a an automobile advertising campaign many years ago. See, this, this album was put out in 2007, so right around uh, that time. So yes, very good stuff. If you'd like Beck's early work, I would su suggest trying out Simple Kid. I think he's put out a new album sometime in the last few years. I have not checked that one out yet. I just found out about it, actually. Then we have... Uh, Frank Sinatra with his classic album In the Wee Small Hours. And this is one that I got in that what I call that binder haul when I had those two huge binders full of CDs that didn't have their uh, art and stuff in with them. So I actually, yeah, it's a legit CD, but I actually looked up the inserts, found the inserts online, and did those on my printer. So, yeah, that's why it might look a little off. It's a very good album. One of these days I'll probably pick up uh, a, a genuine article. <clears throat> so I have the real inserts. And then we have Sinatra and Antonio Carlos Jobim. This is the complete re reprise recordings. They did, I believe, two albums. Uh, this collects all the songs from both of those albums. Uh, I found this at a store in Salem or Albany, which was... It was an okay store. It was really cluttered, though. So, uh, anyway. And then we have The Best of the Best by Sinatra. Uh, the, the title is self-explanatory. Then we have, I've talked about this one recently, I think, I can't remember, anyway. Uh, she is a Norwegian artist, her name is Sissel. Now, uh, the name is probably not familiar, unless you happen to have gotten some of her albums. She put out a few albums in the States, I believe, but mostly her stuff is just available in Europe and Norway. Um, the movie Titanic, all of the female vocals you hear in that movie, other than Celine Dion in My Heart Will Go On, that other voice is Sissel's voice. So yes, she basically was part of the or uh, orchestral score of the movie. So a little trivia note there for you. But yes, she teamed up with a uh, favorite artist of mine, Espen Lind, on a, a duet. And so that's how I found out about her. 
and I think I actually picked this up before I realized she was the voice we heard in Titanic. And yes, that song with Espen Lind is on here. So yes, and it's a two-disc set. So yes, packed with guts, good stuff. Then we have one of my favorite uh, contemporary recent pop artists, Troy Sivan, with his album Blue Neighborhood, his debut album. And this is the deluxe version. And then his sophomore album, Bloom. And this is the Target version with a bonus track. Now, this artist here, um, they are a Canadian uh, pop duo. Uh, they, they don't do, they don't make records anymore. And this was actually the, the only album with the these two members of the band. Uh, at least one of the members changed uh, b before their second album. Anyway, they're called Sky, and there has been at least one other artist or band by the name of Sky, So, and they're different. They, they were out in like the 60s or 70s. This is, their, uh, this is this version of Sky, or this is this Sky's debut album. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, Piece of Paradise, and this came out in 1999, I believe. Yes, 1999. Great um, synth pop, kind of like Savage Garden, basically, uh, but a little bit more beat heavy. And uh, yes, Strange is a good song. Um, Some kind of wonderful, which is not uh, not one of the two uh, uh, old classic songs. It's a, their own composition. And this is the Japanese version with uh, at least one bonus track. So yes, uh, check out Sky their album, A Piece of Paradise. Uh, very good stuff. If you kind of like Savage Garden, that kind of pop stuff. Now this next block, all except for the very last CD, I'm going to go through kind of quickly because it is all one band. And this is actually another Canadian band. Canadian bands right back to back. Recently took a deep dive into these guys because I got their latest album. And it turns out to have been one of the best decisions I've ever made. Sloan. Uh, this is their debut album, Smeared. I've got twice removed. Yes, I picked up uh, the vast majority of these uh, when I was in Portland with Noah uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, and then um, One Chord to Another, their third album. Then we got Navy Blues. And then Between the Bridges. And these two albums I've had for quite a while. These were like the first two albums I picked up of theirs. Pretty Together. And these two are probably my two favorite albums of theirs. And Action Packed. And we have Never Hear the End of It. And this has uh, a very modest 30 tracks on it. I'm sure quite a, uh, most of them are very short songs, obviously. And then Parallel Play. And then I've got a gap where I'm missing three of their albums. And I do intend to get those last three albums. But their most recent album, called Steady, came out last year. And that is the last of Sloan's albums that I have. So yes, as you can tell, I have grown very, very fond of the group. I uh, couldn't tell you what my favorite album of theirs is, because uh, I haven't spent enough time yet with their earlier albums. But anyway, the final CD in today's block of Tom's Hold On CD collection is Fush You Mang by Smash Mouth. Yes, uh, what can I say? They're, they're, these guys are ear candy. They've had a couple of good hits. Used to have their a greatest hits album of theirs, and I decided to get the individual albums. And now I'm kind of wondering, since shelf space is starting to become a premium again, I'm wondering if just a, di a greatest hits disc is going to be enough. I don't know. Anyway, but for now, I have three of their albums, starting with this one. So anyway, yes. <laughs> Sorry this video was so long. Hopefully with uh, editing it, it will cut down to... Under an hour. Oh yeah, it'll be under an hour because it is just now by the uh, actual recording timer. It's 59 minutes. So anyway, let's go ahead and cut this video short. Uh, yes, I'm still reading my outro. I don't have it totally memorized yet. Give me a little time. Anyway, that'll do it for chapter 18 of my whole darn CD collection. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comments section. I'd love to know what you think. Like I said, any CDs that you'd like to know more about that I showed you, drop them down in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, hit that bell icon so you don't miss future videos, and click my username to browse my past videos. 
Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.